So in two crucial areas, energy and food, the same elite banking families and their corporations have taken control, and the consequences have been devastating. For me, it was overwhelming at first to discover such a monopoly of influence, but I knew it was important. Like learning you have a tough but treatable disease, it helps to understand what's causing it and how it operates if the goal is to cure it. So I continued my investigation. If oil and food are controlled by the big banking families, where else does their influence show up? As I followed the money, I began to see this same pattern of control in just about every area of our lives. And I always found the same families in charge, either directly through their banks and corporations or indirectly through their major foundations. Again, it was the Rockefellers who created the National Education Association with help from the Carnegie Foundation and later from the Ford Foundation. What the captains of industry wanted from our schools was an obedient and docile workforce who would be manageable employees and eager consumers. Schools are to establish fixed habits of response to authority. That's why it takes 12 years. You're to respond reflexively when anyone in a position of authority tells you what to do. Like education, health is yet another area dominated by big money and corporations. The American Medical Association, for example, is largely funded by the Rockefellers who use their funding to influence AMA research and decision making. The average MD in four years of medical school takes one course in nutrition, two and a half hours in many cases, and this, the materials used, the curriculum materials, are supplied by the National Dairy Council and the National Livestock and Meat Board and other industries, including the Sugar Association, with products to sell that actually undermine our health in the first place. Unfortunately, the way the system of medicine is set up, Medical education is primarily, uh, you know, funded by pharmaceutical companies. So there's a motive to make and sell as many drugs as possible. It's also a very time-effective way of making money for the physician, for the pharmaceutical company, for the whole medical establishment. But it's really perpetuating the problems it was meant to alleviate. Side effects may include nausea, dry mouth, and constipation. Decreases in white blood cells, which can be serious. Sexual side effects, diarrhea, nausea, and sleepiness can lead to coma or death.